This past Friday, July 5th, Mayor Scott Gillingham invited Winnipeggers to join him on Saturday, October 5th to celebrate the arts in an event called the Winnipeg 150 Mayor's Ball. This gala will be held at the RBC Convention Center. This fundraiser will raise money for four of Winnipeg's most recognized arts organizations, the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra, the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, Manitoba Opera, and the Royal Manitoba Theatre Center. Since the COVID pandemic, arts organizations across the country have been fighting to get audience numbers up to pre-pandemic levels. The process has been hard fought, but there is cause for optimism as audience numbers do seem to be climbing. The Winnipeg 150 Mayor's Ball is a fantastic opportunity to bask in the wealth of artistic depth that the city of Winnipeg has. And joining me here over Zoom to talk about the gala, I am joined by Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra Executive Director Angela Birdsell. Hey, Angela, nice to meet you here over Zoom. Hi, Chris. Nice to finally meet you in, well, I was going to say over person, but on Zoom as well. <laughs> Virtually. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have to ask, I was just thinking about this. You became the ED of the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra in 2021, sort of right in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, I can't think of a more tricky situation uh, to be <laughs> plunged plunged into. How much of the wake of COVID are you still dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis? Very much, uh, we're, we're still very much feeling the repercussions. And, um, you know, I, I've been on your show before uh, talking about, you know, sort of quite in depth about, you know, some of the things that led to, um, you, you know, the post-pandemic reality. I, I joined just as the WSO was preparing to go into its first full season of concerts, but but you might remember that in that first full season, there was the Omicron virus that hit yeah. in January. So we were actually even preparing to resume the, the Netherlands tour plans. But then again, you know, organizations, concerts started dropping off again. So so it was a year of, you know, pardon the, pardon the word, pivoting. Uh, the production team was spacing people rows and seats, be uh, seats between groups of people, if, if folks remember those realities. And it was very much just a stop, drop and roll kind of year. Like, you know, we got very used to dealing with unforeseen circumstances. So that so that was the first year. And then this my second year on the job was, you know, sort of looking at the fact that, and, and you'll recall in that first year, we were still receiving wage and rent subsidies that the federal government had extended them into that year. So it was a fact it was a great year in the sense that we we were able to absorb some of the the post the immediate post pandemic shockwaves that still kind of pervaded the industry and then that second year uh we had reserves set aside that the board very smartly uh you know required us to set aside because we knew that uh you know we should really not expect more than a 60% audience return and that's almost exactly how it panned out um uh in that in that that first year and now now my third year is, has just passed and so the so so that year was a year in which um you know this past year we we're still riding a little bit on the fumes <laughs> from those covid reserves but we were but we're not back at full force so we're still hovering around 63 64% um, and that is happening across the country i mean there was just recently a globe and mail article where Arts organizations of all shapes and sizes are reeling. Uh, the COVID runway is long. So just to remind listeners that of all of the industry sectors, finance, transportation, the, the, the hospitality industries, retail, et cetera, the arts are the worst hit. And mm -hmm. of the arts, the performing arts are increasingly uh, continue to be the worst hit because we are heavily reliant on in-person ticket sales. So that so what we're experiencing here, uh, along with other Winnipeg organizations, is again very very common across the country. Uh, so I think we'll have hit maybe six to three percent in the year that just passed. The good news is subscription numbers are expected to exceed last year and exceed our target of this year. So thank you everyone who's been renewing subscriptions, but we don't know if we will ever be back at uh, the pre-pandemic subscription levels, buyer habits have changed, et cetera. We don't know our, we can't count on what our revenue is gonna be early on in the year. We have to wait until that final single ticket has sold at the end of the year. So, 
So it's still, um, we're not, we're, as I've, I said at the press press conference, we're still not out of, out of deep waters yet. Mm -hmm. um, gr we're grateful that the federal government has stepped up and provided um, a, an additional COVID runway for the three prairie provinces, which by the way, as a region are the worst hit in all of the rest of the country. Um, and so, so we're gratified. We're gratified that the provincial government has increased support to Manitoba Arts Council and to a number of arts sectors. It's we're we're continuing our advocacy because it's still not going to quite meet our needs for this coming year. We're reaching out to our donors, and again, we're reaching out to audiences to say, you know, we've got amazing offerings. We've been able to. Um, you know, be very uh, creative with the resources that we have, the limited resources. We've cut every possible penny we can. Um, and folks are going to be taking a hit. There's no question um, across the organization, but but we're very, very optimistic. And and I'm, I'm so thrilled with the announcement of this mayor's ball because um, the city understands how important the arts and culture are to our community and to the downtown area. I think that this is gonna be an incredibly celebratory event. We're gonna have some amazing showcase uh, uh, representative artists from our four organizations. And it, it's a chance to renew. It's a chance for people who might not normally come and, and hear an orchestra con concert or, or, or see a piece of theater, just, just witness celebrate together all the amazing offerings of the city. So, so mm -hmm. it's a great, a great, uh, great gesture on behalf of, of, of the city of Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. When did planning uh, for the gala start? Like when were, when was the orchestra approached about the possibility of a gala? When did those discussions take place? Um, it, it, it was some months ago. And, um, you know, they first reach out to us. I can't remember, honestly, uh, when exactly. So we've had a number of different conversations back and forth. Uh, I know some organizations have their own galas. And I think that, you know, they've been very careful about the timing of this. So it's not to, to interfere. The Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra does not do a gala. I mean, it's partly we did a we did an assessment. It's, it's a twofold reason. We did an assessment of return on investment. Uh, when it comes to the stewardship, the amount of staff resources that go in uh, and the return on investment. And we just found that it, it it's a very low return on investment um, of our, our staff time. But the, the real reason is this, we're an organization that produces 70 events a year. Now, obviously it's not all the same people that come out to 70 events, but many of our patrons come to 10 or 15 of our concerts a year. So to ask them to come out again to support a gala, we just feel is, is asking a lot of our patrons. If you're an art gallery or if you're a university or a hospital foundation, you don't pull your people together 15 times a year to come to an event. So it kind of makes sense for certain types of organizations to bring their bring their stakeholders together, their supporters for a huge gala. But for the orchestra, we're all about music already. We're all about people coming out to a live performance. And so so we really work hard to to capture our patrons and our donors at our concert events and encourage them to support in other ways if they're able. So so we're um, we're thrilled that the mayor's doing this because again, like I say, it's a, a shared resources. Uh, we've been in in conversation with our partner organizations about a, a beautiful offering that we're we're planning to present at this gala. I think it's going to be uh, gorgeous. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be moving. It's 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 going to really showcase our our organizations. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things I was reading when I was prepping for the interview was. Uh, there was this uh, Winnipeg Arts Council report that uh, came out that said uh, the arts are worth 1.6 billion in GDP uh, for uh, the province. We're really uh, punching above our weight uh, here in Winnipeg. Why do you think the arts are so vibrant here? Uh, and especially knowing what you know now, uh, leading a substantial arts organization, why do you think the arts sector here is so vibrant? Well, the why is a very good question. I remember I spent some time in Regina and uh, when I worked for the Saskatchewan Arts Board and, you know, we would, we would marvel at the fact that in the city like Regina, people would come out 
uh, at 40 below zero to see new dance horizons, contemporary dance, you know, really edgy, cutting edge experimental work. And I think that that, you know, that is a particularly a prairie thing. It's the same with our Winnipeg New Music Festival. I mean, it's the coldest week in January and people will come out six nights, yeah, almost yeah. six consecutive nights and park far away and you'll walk through the cold just because they 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 love the New Music Festival so much. Um, you know, we're we're tough tough people here on the prairies and frankly you know the weather's kind of a source of pride to us and <laughs> but, but I think it's also the fact that we're geographically so isolated um and so we make our own fun so to speak and we do it very very well I mean as we all know visiting conductors come or 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 artists from other you know who have performed with orchestras all over the world and they're you know they do a double take as soon as our orchestra tunes up and, and plays because they absolutely can't believe the quality uh, of the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra and I think the same goes for the Royal Winnipeg Ballet and the RMTC and Manitoba Opera so um, why is that um, our artists live here. They work here, they have families here, they're committed to this community um, and they're committed to bringing their best selves to the stage, to the rehearsal hall. Um, so that that's one thing. Um, and, and I'll just backtrack a little bit on your statistic about the 1.6 billion. Not only is that true in terms of GDP, so direct benefits of ticket buying publics and they attract donations and they attract government funding, but also, you know, all of the ancillary, you know, things associated babysitters and parking and restaurants. We know that the restaurants in downtown Winnipeg don't open on Monday nights because there's no arts going on. I mean, the mm. arts organizations bring people year round. Festivals are great too, because they bring a critical mass and they celebrate, but but our organizations bring people all year long to the downtown. We did um as the four of us have been working together, we 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 figured out that we bring a million people to downtown Winnipeg. And I love the Jets. Don't get me wrong, I love hockey, but I saw on the Jets <laughs> website they bring 560,000 people downtown. Yeah, yeah. And collectively we bring a million. So that doesn't even include Prairie Theater Exchange or or theater for young people or all those other arts organizations. So we're not the only ones. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, um, you know, with, with online and digital shopping and all the rest, like there's not a lot of retail downtown anymore. And so, so we feel that, that, you know, uh, when it comes to downtown recovery and, and development, we were key, we're linchpins to, to the success of, of, you know, revitalizing the downtown core of Winnipeg in terms of hospitality and entertainment offerings and making the downtown feel like a safe place to be, especially at night. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Mayor's Winnipeg 150 Gala for the Arts seems like it's going to be really special. For you, what are you looking to mo looking forward to most about, uh, about the event? Well, I'm looking forward to showing off, showing off our, the musicians of the Winnipeg Symphony. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the expressions on people's faces when they see some of the offerings uh, that that we will have at that at that event. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing people that would not or not normally come to a WSO event. I'm looking forward to meeting some of those people, um, and I'm just looking forward to to the celebration. Um, I think it's going to be really beautiful. I think it's going to be big. Um, and I think people are going to experience and understand and have perhaps a rekindled sense of pride in the arts that the city has to offer. Because again, it's, uh, I think it was, uh, somebody said it's, it's been really hard to compete with the couch uh, post pandemic. And I, I think this could be a turning point where people, you know, say, you know what, I think it is time for me to come back come back, get out more, come back, have a meaningful experience, um, you know, start to network again, start to see people again, start to connect with live bodies again, start to have a collective experience, um, you know, of a, of a piece a piece of music or, or a, a play or a beautiful, beautiful piece of dance. So I, th I do believe, I think it's a very smart idea for the mayor to, to go down this road because 
Uh, it's good for the city and it's good for the arts, but it's also good for the individual, each individual mm -hmm. person who who gets to have that live arts experience. So it might, I think maybe it'll be the beginning of a, of a renaissance of uh, the pride in the culture that we have downtown. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Angela, this has been so great meeting you and talking to you about uh, Winnipeg's wonderful art scene and the mayor's Winnipeg 150 Gala. I'm going to wrap up the conversation by asking, are you going to be able to take any time off uh, this summer to decompress <laughs> and not think about numbers and statistics and uh, work? <laughs> I tell you this, I, you know, I feel like I've been like, I have a music, I have a, a master's degree in mm -hmm. music. I also yep. have an MBA, but you know, for me, it has all been about numbers and statistics and, and, you know, that's part of who I am, but I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back to the, to thinking about music again and thinking about art again and getting more engaged, even myself personally with the other arts that are happening in our community. So in answer to your question, yes, I'm going to have time off, but I'm really hoping as we turn a corner and get some, you know, get our feet back under us with the coming year that I can start to, you know, sort of exercise my creative juices, oops, a little bit more, sorry, I just stopped my video, exercise <laughs> my creative juices and and celebrate even myself as a musician the you know, the, the amazing art that Winnipeg has to offer. Yeah, absolutely. Angela, this has been really, really wonderful. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your very busy day to talk to me today. The gala on October the 5th is going to be just great. And what a wonderful way to celebrate the arts here in Winnipeg. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris.